Hey, Jonathan Caldwell, we'll have you here in Bet McLean's. We'll have you here for a very good reason, and a particular reason. Can you tell the viewers why? Well, I've just started a bit of a sponsorship with McLean's, obviously. Uh, I'm going out to Egypt here at the end of the month to finish the Euro Pro Tour, uh, hopefully secure a Challenge Tour card for next year. Now, can you explain to people who don't know what that's about? Now, it sounds very glamorous going to Egypt. Just take us through what, what this is all about. Well, this is pretty much, it's been going on all year, the Euro Pro Tour. Uh, we play all, all season, trying to get into the top 60 uh, to advance to the Tour Championship, which is in Egypt. Uh, the top five on that order of merit will advance to the Challenge Tour and therefore given an opportunity to advance again to the, to the main tour, the European Tour. So from a punter's point of view, to look at it in sporting parlance, this, this is a, a major step with a bid to, let's say, to get to the Premiership. Absolutely, yes. We're kind of in the third division at the minute. Uh, I have previously played uh, in the European Tour and the Challenge Tour, and I'm just kind of finding my way back there, hopefully. Now, we look at golf. We look at all the top-notch golfers we have, and uh, there seems to be endless amounts of money and big paydays and lots of checks and stuff like that, but it can't be as glamorous as that whenever you're, uh, let's say, in the third division, trying to make it up to the top division. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's like any sport, really. There's, there's plenty of money to be made at it. Uh, if, you're, if you're playing well enough and, and you're in the, the highest ranks, um, it's great to have McLean's on board now. It's very, very costly, obviously, in, the, in this third tier, as we call it, the Euro Pro Tour. It's a lot of travel, a lot of expenses, a lot of entry fees. So it does make a big, big difference to have a good sponsor. Interesting, you go to these playoffs and it's, it's not in the, it's not in the hall or it's not in the gavel corn. It's Egypt, a long, long way to go. So there's clearly a huge amount of expense to try and get to that higher level. Absolutely, yes. Well, that tour uh, tr tends to try and get away for that mm. last tournament. Obviously, this time of year, it's not ideal to be playing, like you say, at Galgorm or or in the UK even, so they do try and get away. I think this is the furthest they've ever travelled. So uh, you know, it's going to be a good experience. Now you talk about a good experience, but you also say that the top five, so it's fairly cutthroat, you have to be on your game. It is, yes, you have to be on your game. Uh, not, not even just this one week, but throughout the season. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't play that ma a massive amount this year. I've only played four events, but I've managed to, to play well in those four events and give myself a chance now in Egypt. How do you do you qualify that in golf? You know what I mean? We all say to play golf and people tell you, oh, the more you practice, the better you get. And yet there you are, you've only played four and yet you've had a good run, you've had a good season. Absolutely. Well, I, I went into those four events. Um, my expectations weren't too high, obviously. I hadn't been playing that much. So I just, well, I knew I was playing well, but I didn't want to get ahead of myself. So, you know, I just played my own game and I managed to, to be playing well and I've been working hard. So well, we're looking forward to each you're looking forward to Egypt. How does Egypt uh, rank in what you've achieved so far? Is this really the pinnacle or is it is it close to being the pinnacle? Is this really a step in the in, into the big time for you? This is more me trying to get back to where I want to be at. Uh, I've, like I say, I've played main tour before. I've played challenge tour numerous seasons. I've played the Euro Pro a couple of seasons uh, and this season, the four events. It's more me trying to get back to where I think I should be and where I want to be. Johnny, how hard is that? You know, how difficult it must it be to, to go from you know the, the top echelons to go back down again to try and bounce back up again? Like that? it must be very difficult. It is difficult, but I think that those things almost make you stronger. You know, I'll I'll know to do things differently when I if I get back to where I want to be, uh, I'll be able to plan things differently, and I'll certainly have a different mentality going into this. For those of us who play golf or sort of ruin a good walk, you know, by losing a lot of golf balls, duffers. Uh, we're always told that the top people, and of course a lot of sport, a lot of it's got to do with your mental approach, isn't it? You know, you have to be physically fit, okay, but you have to be mentally alert as well, don't you? Well, absolutely. Uh, you've got to stay mentally strong. You can, you know, the golf is a is a game where you spend a lot of time on the golf course. It's 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 very important that you, in between shots, you kind of think of other things or maybe chat or, or do whatever to, to get your mind away from the next shot. You don't want to be... It's very, very hard to concentrate for four hours uh, at a time, so... You know, five minutes here or there over each shot, really, and, and get away from it is probably the best way of doing it. We look at uh, Northern Ireland in particular, you know what I mean? Indeed, Irish golf, you know, we're right up there with, uh, with the number one in the world with so many top class performers. Uh, would you ever be envious <coughs> when you look at someone who the lads have achieved and think to yourself, you know, I really should be up there with them? Well, I do think I should be up there with them, but those guys have worked awfully hard to get to where they are uh, and they're fabulous players. So, I mean, I don't feel envious of them at all. I congratulate them, especially Rory, he's done fabulous things in such a, a short space of time. But you know, I'll, I'll hopefully have my chance in the next couple of seasons. 
I said, fair enough point to say, but you know, they practice hard, but I'm sure you practice equally as hard. Absolutely, yeah, I practice hard. Uh, I put maybe 25, 30 hours a week in between uh, doing a bit of work as well. So, I mean, it is a lot of time spent hitting balls and chipping and putting and then doing all those things. Is it um, fair to, sorry, I didn't okay. mean to interrupt you, but is it fair to say almost that no matter where you go, you know, you, you sort of bring the golf clubs with you? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to, everywhere I go, uh, I don't think I've had a holiday in oof, five years. Everywhere I go, the golf clubs are with me and I'm always having to check them in somewhere. The state of golf in Northern Ireland, you know, we look at Rory, obviously, and you talked about his achievements, you know, and G-Mac and Darren, and, you know, you, know, you look at Pawdick Harrington, you look at McGinley as well as Performance Rider Cup, you know, we're on the up sort of Irish golf, so to speak, but overall, what are we like, you know, in, 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 in the, the, let's say, whenever you drop down a few divisions, how strong are we? Well, we've got a lot of guys playing there, obviously. We've got a great academy there at Carton House with the GUI, so they, they bring some great players through and they give them opportunities at a young age which is very, very important. We have a lot of guys in those Challenge Tour, Euro Pro Tour, a lot of guys who are just on the verge of making a break into the, into the bigger tours. You mentioned the GUI, and I'm, I'm often struck whenever I go to events and, and speak to golfers, that all golfers have this great, uh, they, they have a great word for the GUI. They say the GUI is a very proactive organisation and has done so much for the game. It's not often the case that you get people who are involved in sport praising what you would call official them. Absolutely. They give us an opportunity to play on certain teams and they give us the coaching that we need. They give us psychology if we need it. They give us fitness programs, nutritional programs, all those things. And they have a fabulous academy, obviously, at Carton House. Uh, you know, those opportunities at a young age are very important. They almost build you for this future in golf. Interesting, I talked about Gail Gorman, that actual place I got. I should be mentioning Clandy Boy, which is a, a fantastic course too. I'm sure on occasion when you're out there and you are practicing, sometimes you maybe have to pinch yourself and say, look at this here, what a fantastic lifestyle too. Like. It is, yes, it is a fabulous lifestyle. Uh, obviously, to play golf, to do something that you love for a living is, I, is perfect, really. Um, Clandy Boy is a fabulous place, two golf, great golf courses. We've got a great clubhouse, we've got a great membership who are very supportive of, of, of me. And, and it's a real good facility to, to, to hone your skills. Johnny, you say they're very supportive of you. I'm sure that every one of them will be wishing you so well to go to Egypt. But to go to Egypt and to do this, it's not going to be easy. No, no. But uh, I don't think anything worth doing is easy. So, I mean, I'm going to give it uh, my best try. And uh, What happens if, if you don't achieve it? You know, like, yeah, I always look at that sort of way. Like, I'm on, I'm here in a, in a, in a, in a, with my clients, and, you know, what's the odds, and you're winning it, et cetera, et cetera. But if you don't achieve it, well, you know, you obviously be disappointed. But is that a case with a disappointment, you store the disappointment and try and come back even stronger the following year? Absolutely. Well, I think from playing these, these events that I've played this year and the success that I've had uh, and how I've been playing, I feel that even with a mediocre week in Egypt, I still think that I have the game... To, to do the, the job there. If not, then we come back, we look at the drawing board, we see what went wrong and we, we try and put it right and hopefully we come back stronger next year at the Euro Pro Tour. Is mental the key to it? You know, I've often, I've said the earlier on about the whole mental, you know, the whole mental approach. Are there lots of good golfers out there who, let's say, haven't hit that top level yet and an awful lot of, I mean, not to do with their ability, but just they haven't got into the zone or into the focus. Is it is it that harsh, is it? It is. I know... Uh, I know a lot of guys who have natural ability and can swing the golf club fantastically and hit great shots, but when it comes to putting themselves under pressure or staying in the moment or, or doing just being confident really at the end of the day uh, lets them really does let them down. And would G Mac would he fit into that? You know they always call him the fighter. Is he is he a fellow who can get into the zone? People tell me rightly or wrongly that there's other golfers who have more ability than him, but that he's a fellow who stays in the zone. And he works very very hard and is very. Very, very committed when he's there at the moment for his game. Absolutely, I think he is a bit of a fighter and obviously we, we do tend to play a lot of match play, especially in Ireland and the UK with those things, which I think is a great help when it comes to the Ryder Cup. We do play a lot of match play and a lot of team events. But I think G-Mac, yes, you're right, he, he knows his game probably as well as he knows. He knows his expect, he knows how he can hit shots, he knows not to take too many on if he can't take them on. You know, he really does manage his game well and he is a real fighter and he, and he he tends to make those putts when he really needs them. Well, going back to you in Egypt, will you be nervous? Um, on the first tee, probably, yes. But I, I think you kind of have to be, you know. The nerves uh, kind of show that you care almost, you know. So I look forward to them and uh, embrace them. 
Can I ask you, if, on a practical point of view, when you go to Egypt, will you go on your own? Do you bring someone with you? Do you bring a caddy with you? Just to explain to us, you know, to the viewers and the people here with um, McLean's TV what the situation is. Because I say, you know, it's all private jets with a lot of the top lads and caddies and the stuff's, uh, you know, arrived. They, all they do is carry basically a wash bag, I suppose, around the world. But for yourself? Well, I've got my girlfriend going with me. Uh, which well, that's nice. always a good start. Yeah, I'd it's thought, a good you know? start. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. And I've got a good friend of mine, uh, John McIrlain, going out as well. Uh, so the, what the package included was they did a package for friends and family uh -huh. to travel as well. So uh, they've both opted to, to take that option. I'm looking forward to the trip. And them. I suppose when you come off the course and maybe you've had a good day and a different day or a great day, it's always nice to have somebody there, a confidant, who can speak to you, either to, to, to lift you up or another one who can console you or someone you, or someone you can just even talk to. Well, I try to leave whatever's happened on the course on the course or even take that half hour, 45 minutes after the round to evaluate things, maybe had a few balls and warm or cool down, sorry. Um, you know, I don't think it's great to bring your your professional life home with you, you know, leave it there and we'll pick it up when we come back to it. I find that very interesting, you know, that you, that, that you can do that. Is it not difficult to switch off? It is difficult, that? yes, don't uh, get me wrong, it is very, very difficult and uh, it mightn't work all the time, but uh, it's something I try very hard to do. Tell me about Egypt. Is it is it two days, three days? What is it? It's a three day event. Yes. So I leave on the uh, the Sunday the twenty sixth, mm -hmm. and uh, practice round Monday, Tuesday, and then tournament starts Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if you did achieve that, that would be a massive step forward for you too this season, isn't it? After only playing, what you would say, only a few uh, uh, tournaments. It would be it would be a great achievement. Um, you know, it, and it would set me up really well, confidence wise, going into next season on the Challenge Tour. And again, if it doesn't, you'll just store it and go on from there, continue to play at Clandy Boy and continue to try and get back up where you feel you really deserve to be. Absolutely, yeah, I feel that my game's well, not deserve there. to be, where you feel you're capable of being, because as you said, nobody deserves anything unless you put the hard work in. Well, that's right, yeah. So I'll, I'll continue to put the hard work in. If it doesn't work out in Egypt, I think I've given myself a great chance in these four events that I've played this year, and I can take a lot from that. Uh, um, hopefully we can take it from there. And if it doesn't happen this year, then we'll be, we'll be looking to make it happen next year. Well, Johnny, we really appreciate you joining us here at McLean's TV, and uh, I know that uh, McLean's have helped you uh, a small bit, and I'm just looking, do you want to bet? Maybe we, maybe we do want to bet, listening to Johnny Caldwell, uh, getting there in Egypt and moving uh, up again where he deserves to be. Wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, Adrian.